In the cosmic symphony of life, every melody has its last note. But as we all know, in the life cycle, death is an inevitable part of the journey. It's normal to wonder what will happen when you die. Questions abound. Is dying itself painful? Does postmortem brain activity mean the person is aware of his or her death? Are there unexplained movements of corpses after death? Could a pregnant woman deliver a baby after death? Is it possible for men to have an erection and even ejaculate after death? Is dying accompanied by a rush of euphoria or a sense of peace? In this exploration, we'll provide answers to these and other queries on the afterlife. Stay with us as we embark on a fascinating exploration of the complex series of events that unfold when the final chapter of life is written. So you know about this? Death occurs when the essential functions of life, namely blood circulation and breathing, cease and cannot be revived, or in the case of brain death, when the brain and brain stem cease to function. The precise moment of death is just part of a longer dying process, encompassing the gradual or swift shutdown of vital functions. Our journey begins at the heart of the matter, quite literally, with the conductor of life's grand orchestra, the heart. When death approaches, the heart's symphony slowly fades into silence, setting off a chain reaction that marks the beginning of the end. The first step comprises heart failure. The heart, once a relentless drummer, now falters in its rhythm. Whether because of cardiac arrest, heart disease, or unforgiving trauma, the silence of its last beat is a poignant moment. The cessation of the heart's dance brings the second step, the unforgiving loss of circulation. During this phase, the cells of the body are starved for oxygen and nutrients. With this final curtain falling on the life-sustaining circulation, a profound transformation begins. According to research, brain activity may continue for approximately 10 minutes after death. The once vibrant center of consciousness and thought, the brain, gives up to the absence of oxygen-rich blood. Its symphony of electrical impulses gracefully fades away as its cells bid a serene farewell. However, observing brain activity does not imply that a person is cognizant of their passing, since awareness is one of the first functions to cease. Whether dying is accompanied by a rush of euphoria or a sense of peace remains inconclusive. However, some researchers have proposed the possibility of an endorphin rush in humans occurring just before death. An intriguing 2011 study observed that serotonin levels, associated with feelings of happiness, significantly increased in the brains of six rats as they approached death. This said, it's crucial to recognize that every death is unique. The complexities of individual experiences at the end of life make it challenging to provide definitive answers on this profound aspect of human existence. Inside our bodies, with the orchestra conductor gone, the body's microscopic performers begin their ultimate act. With the interruption of oxygen supply and energy production, the body's cells begin to break down, a silent yet extraordinary spectacle. Various processes characterize this phase. Dying bodies fight to survive. In the absence of life-sustaining oxygen, the cells attempt to generate energy through anaerobic metabolism, an inefficient dance to produce energy without oxygen. This process increases the levels of lactic acid in your body. As lactic acid builds, tissues are cast into an acidic world. The cellular elegy continues as energy reserves vanish and waste products accumulate. The cells release their contents into the surrounding tissues, relinquishing their structural integrity. Like fireworks in reverse, cells burst, releasing their inner brilliance into the void. As cells break down, enzymes that were once compartmentalized within cellular structures break free from their chambers and digest the cells from within. The final curtain descends upon the vital organs. The shutdown of organs occurs at varying rates. For example, the lungs often cease to function before the heart comes to a complete stop. The other organs, once masters of their domains, falter under the weight of the fading symphony. At the end of this phase, organs rupture and release their contents into surrounding tissues. The breakdown of proteins and other molecules ensues in the release of gases and foul-smelling substances. This process throws in the characteristic odor associated with death. On the outside, changes begin to pile up. Our capillaries beneath the skin's surface infuse us with the lively glow of life. We often fail to notice it unless we blush, but when blood no longer circulates, the skin takes on a pale appearance, reminiscent of a zombie's complexion. This is called pallor mortis and initiates around 15 to 30 minutes of the heart's cessation. Also, 
During this phase, the cornea of the eye may become cloudy, known as corneal opacity. This happens because the cells in the eye break down and lose their ability to protect the cornea from the fluid inside the eye. All muscles enter a state of complete relaxation. The eyelids lose their tension, pupils dilate, and the jaw may gently fall open, while the joints and limbs become flexible. This relaxation of muscles results in the skin sagging, giving prominence to joints and bones such as the jaw or hips. As the muscles halt their tension, sphincters release, allowing urine and feces to pass. And yes, men can experience an erection and even ejaculate after death, a phenomenon known as rigor erectus. I said, you don't know what you're talking about. One notable exception to this primary flaccidity is the postmortem spasms, where a body's muscles contract and stiffen shortly after death. This phenomenon has led to myths and folklore about corpses mysteriously moving after dying. While the exact cause of these spasms remains unknown, it is often associated with deaths occurring under extreme physical circumstances, carrying intense emotions. As warm-blooded organisms, humans possess the remarkable ability to maintain a steady internal temperature, irrespective of the external environment. The brain acts as our thermostat, while the circulatory system functions as the primary heat dissipator, regulating our body's warmth. Without the active involvement of the brain and the circulatory system in distributing heat, the body embarks on a cooling journey from its normal temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit until it aligns with the surrounding air temperature. Can you be more specific? This gradual decrease in body temperature, known as the death chill, occurs at a slow steady rate of 1.5 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. Forensic scientists can use the steady decrease in body temperature to approximate the time of death, given that the body has not yet completely cooled or experienced extreme environmental temperatures. In the aftermath of death, two notable post-mortem processes occur, namely rigor mortis and liver mortis. As time passes, the muscles gradually deplete their energy reserves. Consequently, Muscles become fixed in the position they were in when the energy stores were exhausted. All muscles stiffen, beginning with the smaller muscles like those of the eyelids, jaw, and neck. In the subsequent hours, rigor mortis gradually extends its embrace to encompass the face, moving down the chest, abdomen, arms, and legs until it finally reaches the fingers and toes. Interestingly, an intriguing custom of placing coins on the deceased's eyelids might have originated from the desire to keep their eyes closed since rigor mortis typically affects the eyes first. Since the heart no longer pumps blood, gravity takes center stage, gently pulling the blood toward the body's lower regions, causing a purplish-red discoloration akin to a bruise. This helps forensic experts when determining the position of the body at the time of death. Following the state of maximum rigor mortis, a gradual release of muscle stiffness begins driven by ongoing internal tissue decay. The body's muscles once again assume a relaxed state. This process unfolds over one to three days. During secondary flaccidity, the skin undergoes a contraction, creating the illusion that the deceased's hair and nails are growing. As the hours turn into days, the final chapter of the eternal symphony commences. The body's once vibrant soft tissues undergo rapid disintegration and liquefaction, leading to the eventual collapse of bodily structures and a humble return to the embrace of the earth. Yes, a deceased pregnant woman could deliver a baby during this step. This phenomenon is known as coffin birth. It is the expulsion of a non-viable fetus from the body of a deceased pregnant woman because of increasing pressure from intra-abdominal gases. The final act approaches as weeks and months pass. Depending on environmental conditions, the soft tissues and organs have decomposed, leaving only the skeleton behind. Essentially, bones, cartilage, and hair keep their strength for a longer time. As the body embraces its inevitable transformation, we come face to face with the undeniable truth. In the end, only the skeleton remains, a reminder of the fragility and beauty of life's journey. Death is a complex process involving a series of interconnected events. The process of dying itself is considered not to be inherently painful. Medical researchers maintain that dying, as a natural course, does not entail significant pain. However, 
it is essential to acknowledge that individuals with specific medical conditions may experience pain toward the end of life. This discomfort, however, is typically linked to the underlying illness rather than the process of dying itself. From the initial shutdown of the heart and circulation to the eventual breakdown of cellular structures, the body undergoes a remarkable transformation. Understanding the physical processes that occur when we die can shed light on the delicate balance that sustains life and the fragility of the human body. As we bid adieu to the earthly vessel, we are reminded that life and death are intertwined, two halves of the same enigmatic dance. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button now and join our community. By subscribing, you'll help us create and share even more powerful stories that will brighten our day and broaden our perspectives. Your simple action can make a big difference to our mission. Thank you for being a part of this journey. Subscribe today. Also, we recommend you to watch another of our videos in which we tackle another captivating story. Bright Talk Style, one revelation at a time. The links are here on this screen and in the description below.